I'm Cindy Sewell and we're doing our annual competency on plum pumps. This is a plum A is what it's called and you'll find instructions if you have to troubleshoot on it on the side hanging here. Anne's going to be my student today and if I forget something or she needs to ask a question she's going to feel free to do that, okay? Okay, first of all we're going to know that these pumps always have to be plugged in. If they're not plugged in, they lose their charge, then we have to send them to maintenance and it takes a pump off the floor and causes a lot of problems. You always want to make sure it's a clean pump when you're taking it into a patient's room. I already moved the sanitizer strip off of it, but, but I know this was a clean pump when I started. So, first of all, priming your pump. You're going to prime, you're going to set up your line A by using a set of, you're going to use the primary IV plumb set, okay? And that has a cartridge that fits right into here. But before I go that far, I'm going to get a blue clave. In case I need to do a secondary port, I'm going to get a blue clave here. I'm going to take off this white gadget there that's on the side of the pump. Good thing this is wrapped up still because it's still clean. <laughs> I don't have to run and get another one. So here, here we go. And I put it on here. I'm going to make sure that this is closed. So I'm going to push on that little button just to make sure it's in there. So that when I prime it, I'm going to be able to prime it without getting a whole bunch of air bubbles in everything. Okay. So I pull off this white valve because this is the one that the IV tubing goes into. This is if you need to add an IV medication to it, you'd pop that off. And, and use a needle to put an IV medication into this bag, but I'm going to push that in. I'm going to prime this part of the tubing, and then I'm going to turn this upside down, let the fluids run down to this point so that I have this primed. Then I'm going to open up my port, and then I'll, as soon as it got down to this point, I turned it over so that it could finish um, priming the rest of the tubing. Put this up here so it's not in our way. So I'm letting that get all primed all the way down. Okay? And for our purposes today, it's going to drain into here, but normally it would be um, hooked into the patient. After I close this, this closes it off so it's not running anymore. And then I would hook it up to my patient all primed and ready to go. Now, setting up, this is going to be my A, so I'm going to turn it on and let it calibrate. And I need to pull this off of here so that the pump doesn't think that it's occluded. Okay, and it's going to go through its checks. Now, if I had already just recently ran something in with this pump, it's, it would have came up with a screen saying, do you want to clear the settings or not? Because supposedly, suppose I stopped this in, because the patient had to go to radiology or whatever and they're back within an hour. It's going to ask, do you want to clear the settings? You're going to say no. And then you're going to restart it. If you want to clear the settings, it's going to clear the settings, it's going to clear your volume and everything. So. But that's what it would ask you, it would clue you first, and so hopefully we'll get a chance to show you that. So here's line A, and it's going to ask me the rate, and if I wanted to run it at 100 I would, if I wanted to run it at 150, depending on what the doctor said the rate would be. Then I'd put in my volume, which is, I'm going to say 450, because we've primed it. You could, I would normally actually probably say like 490 or 480, but for this purpose I'm saying 450. And then say I knew I had 450 in there, and the doctor said I want it up there, I want to run it at two, I want it running over 20 minutes. And you don't have time to stop and figure the rate. You can move it down to here. That's hours. That's minutes, and I'm going to say 20 minutes. It's going to, it doesn't tell you a rate because that would be too high for the pump. The pump won't go higher than 999. So let me go back. 
let me say, I'm going to clear this, I'm going to go back, I'm going to say I want it to go over two hours. Then it's going to tell me it would run at 225 an hour, okay? So then I start it, there it goes. Then. I have a question. What? Does that mean that the pump won't let you program a time that's inappropriate for the volume? Exactly. So the pump doesn't... 99 mm -hmm. is as high as it will go. So the pump um, helps so, you stay compliant with the parameters of right. what's allowed. So on, on line A, I'm going to go to A again, and I'm going to change that rate. I'm going to try... It might let me go to 1,000. I don't think so, though. Maybe the volume... No, nope, it won't. So... So I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to go 999, and it will run it. It'll run that, see? Mm -hmm. It allowed me to put it in. It won't if you, if you can't go that, that high. So my question this time is, if I knew the volume, and I knew the rate that I wanted to do, it would automatically calculate the duration for me. Does it go both ways for you? Yes. If okay. I wanted the rate, it's going to automatically tell me. Okay, so here we go. We're going to clear it again. I know the rate. Doctor says 100 an hour. For 448 now they have on there. It tells me the duration will be 4 hours and 29 minutes. So it will calculate that. Not to say that we shouldn't go back and check these calculations, but if you're in a pinch and the doctor says I want it ran over 2 hours and you want to put 2 hours down here and it gives you a rate, you can start it and then check to make sure that the pump is accurate because it's just the machine like everything else. So I'm going to start this. Now with this maintenance dose of 100 cc's of normal saline an hour, the doctor wants an antibiotic, right? So I'm going to get my, then the antibiotic can either run piggyback with this, with line A, or it can run concurrent with line A. Okay. What, is, what do those mean, piggyback and concurrent? Piggyback means that line A will go, will be delayed while this infuses. Concurrent means they'll both run in. Okay? If you have to have a rate higher than 500, it won't run it. It won't run, so I'll show you. Let me prime this. Now a trick with these I've learned, these short tubings, is to pull this all the way to the top lock it down, then access your bag, prime this top part, and then do this. You end up with less air in the tubing if you do it that way. Only because I've done 100 million of them now in chemotherapy, so I know that. <laughs> So then, you don't end up with air here, and you don't have to back prime. So now, the reason that I had prepared blue, even though the doctor hadn't ordered antibiotics yet, this patient's in the hospital for a reason, so I figure somewhere down the line he's going to need a secondary infusion of something, whether you do it with a syringe or whether you do it with a tubing.